Hey, good evening. It's a Tuesday, February 20th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Now, again, it's such a privilege to be able to talk with you, and I want to, just, just beginning tonight, just thank all of those of you who do support what's happening here financially. Uh, anything that you're able to give is certainly more than appreciated. Uh, you can check us out on, the, on my website, everydaytalks247.com. There's a place to give there. So again, I just wanted to thank so much those of you who do give and uh, those of you who pray, those of you who participate. It's uh, such a joy. We have over 200,000 views so far. So again, it's just a, a blessing to be able to talk about really good things with you. I'm going to continue what I started last night about to know God better. That's the theme of Ephesians. Everything Paul is going to be telling us in this magnificent little book here, this, this letter, is so that we could know God more intently with more meaning. And he tells us how to do it. It's not about what I think about how to know him. It's how he's telling me how to know him and what that does for me. So last night we looked at verse 17. Paul says he keeps asking the Lord God, our, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you, give me, a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know him better, that we may have the knowledge of him, some translations read. But then he tells us, begins to tell us how to do that. So that as we read through the book, this little short book, this long letter, we can buy into what he's telling us. So he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that your heart may grasp the beautiful light of the word of Christ in order that you may know, and then three things that he wants us to know. And that's what's important. The first is, we may know the hope to which he's called us. And that hope is the purpose. We don't want to confuse my purpose with God's purpose. But he is, there's, we have a hope. A hope in the Bible is not, I wish it will come through someday. Hope in the Bible is, I know for sure that God is faithful. So what he wants us to be involved with, to grasp, to make ours, is his purpose for us. Remember, he knows each one of us intimately. He's worked all the circumstances of my life and your life so that we can bring honor to his name. But in the way that he has made us, we're all distinct, beautiful, unique human beings. God's poem, God's workmanship, as we're going to see later on in Ephesians 2. That hope is not just some weird idea floating in the sky, but he's made each one of us to have a particular task in his kingdom that we can lock on to. So there's the first thing. We may know the hope to which he's called us. The purpose that he's given to us. Along with that hope, he's given us a real promise, a real inheritance of wealth that's just incredibly valuable. More than we could ask or imagine. That's the inheritance we have. So the question we could ask here is what are you and I investing in? Are we investing in an inheritance that's only for this earth? Whereas Jesus says, it can be gone. Thieves can take it. It can just rust. It can rot. It can fall apart. The warranty runs out. But in God's purpose, the inheritance he gives us, it's rich, it's full. It's beyond anything that we can imagine. The incomparably great, amazingly great value that's there. Are we going to invest in the things that are going to go away on this planet? Or are we going to invest in relationship with God first and with each other? And as we go through the book, we'll see how this takes gets legs and has purpose. As we discover what this life is all about. And then the last thing... We've got three things. The first is that we may know the hope, the purpose of which he's called us. That we may know the rich 
the wonder of the great wealth of our inheritance, which you won't hear anywhere else except for what the Bible tells us. And then lastly, that we may know his incomparably great power for us. Verse 19.